Here's a look at some of what's in the papers on this Thursday morning. There is one item that stands out above everything else as a must-read this morning. It is the op-ed submission in the New York Times from Gabby Giffords, the woman whose life was changed forever by the, the crazed gunman who attacked her and, uh, and others in Arizona. She says uh, she is furious about the Senate vote against background checks. Even if you're part of the small percentage of Americans who, who disagree with her, you should hear her argument. So I'm going to read it. And if we have any time at the end, I'll, I'll get to some of the other stories. Gabrielle Giffords writes, Senators say they fear the NRA and the gun lobby, but I think that fear must be nothing compared to the fear that the first graders in Sandy Hook Elementary School felt as their lives ended in a hail of bullets. The fear that those children who survived the massacre must feel every time they remember their teachers stacking them into closets and bathrooms, whispering that they loved them so that love would be the last thing the students heard if the gunman found them. On Wednesday, a minority of senators gave in to fear and blocked common sense legislation that would have made it harder for criminals and people with dangerous mental illnesses to get hold of deadly firearms, a bill that could prevent future tragedies like those in Newtown, Aurora, Blacksburg, and too many communities to count. Giffords goes on to say some of the senators who voted against the background check amendments have met with grieving parents whose children were murdered at Sandy Hook and in Newtown. Uh, some of the uh, uh, the senators who voted uh, no have also looked into my eyes, she says, as I talked about my experience being shot in the head at point blank range in suburban Tucson two years ago and expressed sympathy for the 18 other people shot besides me, six of whom died. These senators have heard from their constituents whose polls overwhelmingly uh, favored expanding background checks and still these senators decided to do nothing. Shame on them. I watch TV and read the papers like everyone else we know what we're going to hear vague platitudes like tough vote and complicated issue i was elected six times to represent southern arizona in the state legislature and then in congress i know what a complicated issue is i know what it feels like to take a tough vote this was neither she says speaking is physically difficult for me but my feelings are clear i'm furious i will not rest until we have righted the wrong these senators have done until we have changed our laws so we can look parents in the face and say we are trying to keep your children safe. We cannot allow the status quo uh, desperately protected by the gun lobby so that they can make more money by spreading fear and misinformation to go on. I am asking every reasonable American to help me tell the truth about the cowardice these senators demonstrated. I am asking for mothers to stop these lawmakers at grocery stores and tell them you've lost my vote. She says, people have told me I'm courageous, but I have seen greater courage. Gabe Zimmerman, my friend and staff member in whose honor we dedicated a room at the U.S. Capitol this week, uh, who saw me shot in the head and saw the shooter turn his gunfire on others, Gabe ran toward me as I lay bleeding. I have thought a lot about why Gabe ran toward me when he could have run away. Service was part of his life, but it was also his job. The senators who voted against background checks online and for gun show sales and those who voted against checks to screen out would-be gun buyers with mental illness failed to do their job. They looked at these most benign and practical of solutions offered by moderates from each party. And then they looked over their shoulder at the powerful, shadowy gun lobby and brought shame on themselves and our government itself by choosing to do nothing. They will try to hide their decision behind grand talk, behind willfully false accounts of what Bill might have done, she says, trust me, I know how politicians talk when they want to distract you, but their decision was based on a misplaced sense of self-interest. I say misplaced because to preserve their dignity and their legacy, they should have heeded the votes of their constituents. They should have honored the legacy of thousands of victims of gun violence and their families who have begged for action, not because it would bring their loved ones back, but because others might be spared their agony. She says, this defeat is only the latest chapter in what I've known would be a long haul. Our democracy's history is littered with names we neither remember nor celebrate. People who stood in the way of progress while protecting the powerful. On Wednesday, a number of senators voted to join that list. Finally, she writes, mark my words, if we cannot make our community safer with the Congress we have now, we will use every means available to make sure we have a different Congress, one that puts community's interests ahead of the gun lobbies to do nothing while others are in danger is not the American way. That from Gabriel Giffords this morning in the New York Times, the gun control story on the front page of the Times as well.
the uh, news analysis down at the bottom of the page there says the tragedy of Newtown was no match for the combination of anxious, vulnerable Democrats, deep-seated Republican resistance, and the enduring clout of the NRA.